<laughs> Welcome to the Inspired Evolution, and it is such a treat to be here today, because we've got the vibes out loud <laughs> from Nicole Gibson. How are you, Nicole? I'm amazing and super happy to be here with you. Oh, yo, such a treat yeah. to have you here, man. In Tallinn. Such a treat. I know, right? Like Estonia, oh, Tallinn, of like from Queensland and Melbourne connected in and no. Europe and like on the other side of the planet yeah. it's like what a world we live in right? just for this podcast just yeah <laughs> to enjoy it in the sun in Europe we literally flew out 24 yeah. hours each of us went both ways <laughs> I went through Hong Kong which way did you come through here I actually had to go to London but I flew through um China just to make this podcast happen just, yeah. <laughs> just to deliver it to you guys on the slide <laughs> We might be fudging a little bit of the details yeah. there. <laughs> feel special though. <laughs> we do love you. <laughs> um, so those tuning in to Nicole for the first time on the Inspired Evolution, um, Nicole is known as a multi-award winning and social entrepreneur, but she prefers to be seen as an unstoppable messenger of love and human potential. She wrote Love Out Loud, mm. right? A Millennial's Guide to Enlightenment. Boom. Bo- like, bo- boom. Statement. That pretty much says it all. Um, <laughs> but... Nicole is a fierce ambassador for mental health, right? Innovation and connection after recovering from her own terrifying lived experience with anorexia, nervousness through her own teenage years. Um, her journey so far, basically, Nicole was 18 years old. She established a non-for-profit and grew it sustainably while completing multiple national speaking tours. At 20, she was a finalist for the Young Australian of the Year, listed as one of Australia's top 100 most influential women at 21, shortly after taking out the Pride of Australia medal. Yo! <laughs> she made the front cover of the Yellow Pages and has been featured in the Financial Review, starred in a documentary aired on primetime national TV. She was the youngest com- uh, Commonwealth Commissioner for Mental Health in History during her three year term advising directly to the Australian Federal Health Minister and Prime Minister. She's facilitated workshops and presentations with over 250,000 Aussies. Um, she's skilled and experienced motivational speaker and facilitated developing her own facilitation methods early on in her career, which I can't wait to talk about some yep. of these circles that you create, yo. Um, and they continue to evolve. <laughs> Evolution. evolution. Inspired yeah. evolution. Yo. <laughs> she draws upon 10 years of theatre training as the base of her facilitation style and there's a whole bunch of awards and like those tuning in to, to, from Nicole's channel, yo, awesome to have you here. And Inspired Evolution, super, super thrilled to have you here. Thanks for it. Um, man, it is, yeah, I, um, mental health is something that's um, really dear to my heart mm. um, primarily because I struggle with depression for about five to seven years mm. and um I, have, I, lo- I loved your TED talk. Absolutely loved thank your TEDx you. talk. So thank you so much for that, mm. um, because it like it it talked a lot about connection, mm. right? And being the fundamental. And when I reflect back on um, what I went through, basically, I grew up with this thing where I was really dishonest, mm. right? And my dishonesty stemmed from just culturally I grew up in like I grew up in an immigrant family in Australia. Mm. So being in like an Eastern culture, it was all about keeping up appearances, mm. right? And it wasn't about integrity. So it was just like, sure. like just keep up appearances. And I thought that's how everybody lived life, you know, just well, keeping up the appearances, keeping yeah. up the appearances um, rather than being honest. Mm. And then I had this basically this meltdown where the appearance I was keeping up, everybody just poof, soared right through the facade and I was like, what, isn't everybody like this? Like, yeah. oh, and then it's like, no, like you can live from integrity and honesty. Mm. I remember like the moment I was sitting in the psychologist's office and she basically diagnosed me with depression and it was like, boom, it was almost like a moment of awakening, right? It was mm. just everything sort of clicked in and it was just like, oh, shit. It was really th- healing, mm. first and foremost, to know that it was depression. And the biggest thing, and I share this all the time, and this is why I was reveling, like re- um, reflecting on uh, connection, because just knowing that other people had gone through what I had gone through mm. was like one of the biggest like healing things. Of course. You know? Because yeah. all of a sudden it wasn't just like me in my own little bubble. It mm. was like, oh, everybody goes through this. Everyone's a little bit messed up. Yeah, you know? And it was like... How oh. relieving. Yeah, it kind of was, right? It was like yeah. just that connection to like, oh, I'm not the only like loony in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> And um, and so that was that was really really um, 
So there was that connection there that showed mm. up and that was really healing for me. And then I realized that the connection was missing because I couldn't connect to the like the Australian way of living and the Australian culture mm. because of the immigrant culture that I grew up in. So there Where was a was disconnect your from, from, originally? from India, okay. right? Yeah. And so there was like a, a disconnect in the culture yeah. based on the value. So like cultural, societal norms, because I know you've been into like the indigenous culture and found like Definitely. a lot more grounded, like brutesy stuff that's yeah. not like society overlay right so like that society societal overlay and how that creates a disconnect is really interesting so i wanted to have a chat about that yeah wow i love um i love the honesty that you're sharing this you know honesty is a really really big part of my book Mm. the x it's actually chapter two um and it's so early on in the book because it's so quintessential for transformation right and it's i think it's something that sometimes lost a lot in the messaging of um, development is that until you can be really honest about where you're at, uh-huh. you know, you can't, you can't change, you can't transform. Yeah. I, I put it in the book as we can't heal what we don't reveal. Right? Ah, and that's was, very poetically put. Was, yeah. <laughs> and um, it was such a big part of my journey, you know, like that was, um, and I discuss it, the the journey of living with anorexia for, for years and mental illness for years was the the process of basically living in a really dishonest way. And it wasn't because I was a bad person. You know, I can Mm. really empathize with where you come from. It's just the feeling of not knowing how to break through those walls. And that ultimate realization of, wow, I actually can't, I will be stuck within these confines Mm. of my own secrecy forever unless Mm. I actually start to become honest with that. Yeah. And it's sort of a missing link with it's it's one thing to sort of think positive and know that you can live the life of your dreams. It's another thing to really face your shit and look at where you're not being honest because if you're being honest with yourself, then that bridge between, you know, your aspiration and where you currently are becomes clear. So if that mm, pathway is not clear for you, yeah, there's yeah. something that you're not quite, you know, revealing. Yeah. yeah. And being honest with yourself, um, is the starting point of that. It's not about going and, you know, tomorrow making the change and get confessing to everyone unless you feel in, inspired to do so, but just start yeah. to have that dialogue and that is integrity, right? Yeah. Um, I watched a beautiful – another brother back in Australia put it as um, knowing or feeling that there's a witness to our existence mm. creates a deeper um, motivation to be honest with ourselves. And That's so beautiful. Quite, yeah, quite often when we um, when we feel alone, what's the incentive to be honest? You know, mm. when, and for me that um, experience of of discovering love, which to me is that ever present flow of, of life and universal mm. God, however you see that, yeah, um, helps me understand that I there is a witness that I can be completely honest with, and that helps me be honest with with me. Mm. love's a massive topic and i can't wait to groove into that it's like yeah it's it's huge but just before we do i think like you touched on your own story through like battling through anorexia and Mm. so what was the impetus to change and then like what was like i'm I'm really curious about what drove you into like um traveling around australia as well and like connecting to the culture there yeah it was um pretty radical story it was almost like a i was sharing with someone yesterday um, quite a samadhi experience. Mm. You know, I had been in pain for so long and I think that there's two impetuses to change. One is when your back's up against the wall so tightly you have no choice. Can show. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and the other is, Fishin was talking about it yesterday, you know, you're inspired to change and Satori. you realise change yeah, yeah. Is, is possible. And for me, I had been in pain for so long and at a young age I had to ask myself quite heavy questions like mm. am I – prepared to devote the rest of my life or even more intense am I prepared to die for essentially my ego which was what was driving the eating disorder Mm. feeling feeling I had to be a particular way to meet other people's expectations and standards which was just a projection of my own expectations of and standards of myself but was totally void of any sense of self-love or self-compassion yeah and starting to ask myself those questions, which was spurred by just being in pain for so long. And my body was in such a crippled state. Like Mm. it wasn't just emotional or mental pain. At that point in my journey, it was immense physical pain. Uh Um, Yeah, I had no choice but to ask. And when I asked myself that question, the answer was no. But then there was this flooding, overwhelming realization of, there's so much I have to start becoming honest about. Mm -hmm. And that's so, that was so overwhelming. And in for whatever reason, as I started to crack myself open in that way, 
I started to realize that I started to realize my insignificance. And I think when you're dealing with mental illness, it's very self-oriented. Mm. Selfish is probably a harsh way to put it, but it's very self-oriented. You can you yeah. only have capacity to think you're about definitely in your own little bubble. Your aren't own you? pain, yeah. yeah. So this um, realization that life is actually about giving and service, and mm. the reason, the source for so much of my unhappiness was actually how self-focused I was. Yeah. And I started listening, and the more I started to listen, the more um, unconventional the things were that I heard. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't um, the, the path that was laid out for me. It but, was almost safer in the bubble. You know, like, okay, go back and take the red pill. Take that, take that. Yeah. And yeah. by that point, I was six months into a uni degree, and I remember just – a lot of moments sitting up the back of my um, uni lecture and just looking out at, you know, 500 other students and I was studying a marketing major and I just remember thinking the ethics of this are fucked. Yeah. No one is questioning that. I'm the only student that's actually challenging what's being mm. said. Um, and is this really it? Mm. You know, and I'm sure lots of people, most people that make change in their life have those questions like is this really as good as it gets is this what life is about is this what's prescribed and is this what I'm meant to swallow yeah yeah and I sort of knew through leaving school and I had started to recover at that point from the eating disorder that there was more in me yeah um but I, I didn't know how to make that happen so the more I started to to listen I think we always know how to make it happen but we're not always prepared to listen because the information can sometimes be so unconventional and left yeah. field we want to deny it and think yeah. that there's another way well, it's so unfamiliar at that point isn't exactly it? Yeah. yep and crazy crazy things started to happen um i don't often share sort of the ins and outs but i will for the sake of this podcast <laughs> thank you um i actually started to have really crazy dreams and mm. i started to dream um particular characters and people and i started to dream about a yellow van mm. and the more i um was dreaming about this the more synchronicities I was experiencing but ke- right. keep in mind that um I didn't know about synchronicity I didn't know about awakening yeah, 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 there was yeah. nothing <laughs> now there's no language now there's yeah. poetic language around this but back yeah. then it was like I just uh... thought I'm fucking losing my mind <laughs> like my doctors were right I actually am crazy you know yeah. and especially because I had such a history with mental health problems there was always that seed of doubt mm. am, am I crazy you know and mm. that's it's a horrible thing to yeah. to question your own sanity because if mm. you can't trust your own can't trust yourself and then what yeah, is there yeah. yeah but it just became so loud the synchronicities and you know the, the coincidences I write about them as coincidences rather than coincidences coincidences yeah. <laughs> um I just got I it was like I was brought to my knees mm. you know and I surrendered and at that point in my journey, I it was a an experience of giving myself to something greater than myself. And that's really when the magic started to take over. I got the funding to do the trip and what started as, you know, the seed of an idea turned into um, a year and a half of travel living in my van like with absolutely nothing to my name other than this heart that just wanted to learn and serve and I resonate with your desire to hear people's stories yeah. as much as I wanted to share my story for me I wanted to I wanted to know that I wasn't the only person that dealt with the things that I yeah. I went through and the more I went into schools and community groups and workplaces as I traveled you know in my van there were four of us we had two vans so there was a team the more I was just cracked open you know you listen to the first 500 stories and you think wow, it really there seems to be a pattern in the human condition and what yeah. we crave. You listen to 5,000 stories and you're right. like, wow, okay, this is really um, – this is starting to get, you know, cr- like crazy how, yeah. how many similarities. And then by the end of the trip, I had worked with 50,000 people and heard yeah. their stories, you know, often three or four workshops a day. So when you're working in that volume and serving yeah. in that volume, it was like I felt like I experienced 50 years of life in 18 months yeah. just with the sheer amount of humanity I was exposed to mm. and so much diversity, yeah. so much diversity of um, circumstance from an Indigenous community that had a population of, you know, 300 people in the middle of absolutely nowhere with the closest – post box you know an hour and a half drive you know like you just can't yeah. even imagine and and the next city is like another 17 hour drive away like yeah. that's the way that they were living from that to um you know the uh workplaces in canberra with you know politicians and <laughs> military executives you know like and, yeah. and you see that but when you 
um, invite them into a space where that significance isn't the main narrative and you give them an opportunity to speak about their heart and mm. what they're feeling. For me, the biggest thing that st- st- uh, stood out more than anything was, was the similarity. Yeah. Irrespective of all of those things, money, socioeconomics, education, family, race, skin colour, you know, sexuality, mm. whatever, even past experiences, when you strip down the, the differences in the story, the desires were the same. I want to be loved and I want to be heard and I want to be seen and I want my life to feel like it has meaning, you know, and that it could, all of the stories could be summarized down to that. And there was just no way I could, I could go back to a normal life after that. I Mm. was like, this is our, where it's in our DNA to Mm. want this. So why would I ever pursue something or follow a path that was taking me away from, from that? Do you think there's something I was almost going to ask if there was something unique about um, your particular journey that made you not want to go back into the fold, but then I guess once you've been exposed to so much of people looking for the same thing, totally. you realise that these are what's the um, what's at the core of it, and inevitably the, the pressure's all there to mm. make sure the steam is going in the right direction. I think almost. it would happen to anybody. Yeah. I don't think anyone could, could have that experience and, and not, not. Yeah. Can I ask what, like, what was the impetus to like? It was just a realization that mm. it was like services. Service is going to be the key because for me, spirituality is all about service. Mm. You know, it's just like if I have, like how best can I serve? Yeah, um, and it's it's the number one thing pretty much on my agenda. Mm. Um, so, but like, how did that drop in for you? Because you mentioned like so, like you realized that you were going to go out serving. Um, like, what was? Yeah, great question. I was so hungry for acknowledgement. You know, because when you're in pain, that's what you need more than anything. It seems deep. I talk about it in my TED Talk, acknowledgement equals transformation. Yeah. But I, I sought acknowledgement so intensely from other people that I wasn't actually seeking acknowledgement. I was seeking validation. Mm. You know? And I, I feel like it's a very important distinction that needs to be made because to acknowledge you, brother, is to acknowledge your soul and acknowledge why you're here on the planet and, and mm. the service you are just through your existence to humanity. Yeah. That's a very different feeling to to being validated. Yeah. And when I started to realize that, I knew that if I was seeking validation, I was never going to feel validated. Because it's much more, so if, even in the language you can hear, it's much more surface level stuff. Isn't yeah. It? Acknowledgement goes a lot deeper. And acknowledgement begins with, with you. Mm. Unless I could look at the person in the mirror and actually acknowledge myself and my journey. Mm. Um how could I ever feel that or experience that from it from another person? And and realizing that it was this deep reverence. It was like this intense feeling of being humbled, you know, and I was I became so reverent to a force so much greater than me. And I started to think in all of that pain and all of that seeking, I was not giving at all. Mm. No yeah. and and that's such a – I have so much to contribute. Yeah. You know, there are people that um, don't even have a body to recover and heal. You know, they maybe they've been in a car accident and they lose the ability to, to walk. And all of those things that are almost said as cliches, like be grateful for what you have, yeah. started to be a very lived realization and a yeah. very lived experience. And I was so humbled by that that no amount of conversation was ever going to – do justice to what I felt I had to give back and the, the responsibility I had to give back. And, you know, when, you, when you're at that point, you're ready to take very significant action. Mm. And, and then the fear, it's like I talk about you won't be able to overcome your fears until your incentive on the other side of that fear is great enough. Mm. And I just had this immense incentive. Mm. You know, I was able-bodied. I was well. I didn't die from this illness. It actually has a 40% mortality rate. No, it didn't. I survived that. I was a survivor and I had a story and I had a body which I never thought I was going to get back. Doctors told me that I was most likely going to struggle with um, autoimmune problems for the rest of my life. I didn't have um, a period for eight years. I thought that I wasn't going to be able to have a child. You know, all of these things. It was a miracle that I was able to heal myself. And just the gratitude that I experienced through that and the reverence, there was no other. There was no other path for me other than to to do something with that. Mm. I couldn't sit at an office and do reports for someone. I had to, you know, like it just didn't it didn't make sense for me to do that. And um, 
that meant offering that space to, to other human beings. And the mm. more I honored the humanity in others, the more significantly my own life was enriched. I love ontology. Mm. Um, and so that, yeah, what you just shared is really something I'd, I'd love to groove with is, you know, the more you give, the more you receive. And I know that's a, that was like a big, like, you shared on this mm. in your in your TEDx talk as mm. well, lightly, but I'd love to talk about it deeper. Is I um I've recently been interfacing because, like I said, service has been a massive, massive. It's it's everything, mm. um. And so in that space, I've I've noticed that giving mm. is a lot easier. Receiving is sure. like what? <laughs> yeah, it's like we and, can and, definitely go through that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's like it's interesting because it shows up in the in the subtlest ways. Like someone will give me like thank you so much for that podcast episode or thank you so much for mm. even that glass of water. And it's like, I'll immediately repay them with thanks. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, thank you oh. because of this, you yeah, know, and yeah, it's yeah. just like, and I'm I, like, they gave me it's something. It's like a deflection. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, really yeah, interesting yeah. because, and then I like, it's can deep I, seated. Isn't it weird? And like, I'm learning to just stand with my hands closed and just be like, just like honor the fact that they want to give something and mm. learning to actually like receive that and how like, this is going to sound a bit woo-woo, but, like, actually receiving all that energy because they want to – No way is that weird. That's, <laughs> that's a real thing, But, brother. like, they, they want to, they like, they want to give – they want to, like, return that, yeah. like, energy to you because they've given – like, you've shared them with them. And, mm. like, it's been such a massive process mm. at the moment. I'm still going through it. Well, once, like, that – once you learn to, like, give and receive with fluidity, that's, you know, arguably enlightenment, right, mm. because there's this natural symbiosis and – you know, think about like you can even practice this now. Like breathe in, but hold your breath and don't breathe out. And and it feels okay. And then it starts to feel, oh my god, I need to breathe out. Oh, I really need to breathe out. I can't breathe. <laughs> you know, like, um, the same if you're breathing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> you're superhuman. <laughs> Totally, yeah, yeah, that's profound. Thank and you. And continue breathing out and mm-hmm. don't breathe in, and it's it's the same. We're not designed for it to be one way, and that's yeah. because we live in an interdependent universe. Mm. You know, like I rely on your awakening in order to awaken, because as one humanity, you hold a key that I can't see. Your mm. perception is so valuable. Mm. So is mine, and for mm. that reason, like when you can finally understand that. There's no competition and so many of these destructive cultural narratives um, come back to this concept of I need the power mm. and, and it's competitive and I want, I want you know, my brand to be the one that owns love. Like what a ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous thing. You know? it's like, um, I have an ownership over my perception of love mm. that no one can, that's untouchable. You can't ever compete against that. Um, but what you have to offer is equally valuable I think that's, you know, step one of really understanding the importance of um, receiving as well as giving because only giving is a little bit, and and forgive me for saying this, but it's a little bit righteous, right? Because you give, it's almost like you've, um, you're saying that what you have to give is of more significance than what you can actually learn from receiving. And, mm-hmm. and to receive someone's gift is actually to allow their perception of the world to be strengthened through you and by you. And that's a gift, you know, to receive totally. is actually, it's a gift as much as it is as to give, as long as it's in, in balance. That's, mm. that's the key thing. You've got to make sure that it's in balance. And when you look throughout um, history, I talk a lot about um, ancient ritual and rites of passage in my work, mm. and it underpins, it's the model that underpins most of the work I do. Mm. And acknowledgement, and, and I love that you use the word honour, is was so embedded in, in the, the cultural way, you know, throughout history, that we would honour the sun and the moon, but most important, and the land and the food, but most importantly we would actually um, honour each other, you know, sacred processes of acknowledgement and, and honouring were quintessential for our development into new life phases. Mm. So think about coming of age, right? The, the boy would be sent to hunt the tiger. He would face his morality, go through this immense challenge and transformation and what would happen when he returned to the community? He would be Knowledge. celebrated, acknowledged, honoured. And, and what happens when you allow yourself to be acknowledged and, and honoured by others and to receive is it actually consolidates the thing that you're giving. 
Mm. Does that make sense? It actually yeah. allows you to, to to really concrete that and it becomes a foundation. Right. Because we, we need that acknowledgement as humans. Right. You know, we crave it on such a deep level. I know it because I've worked with hundreds of thousands of people and yep. it's the through line. Mm. You know, unquestionably, we all need that. I've mm-hmm. never met an exception to the rule. But there's a there's a humility in the way that you can receive that. You know, and, and if you don't practice that deep receiving of honor and acknowledgement, what tends to happen is you need it anyway. So it starts to actually happen through the ego. Mm. And it, it starts to um, manifest in whichever ways, you know, your ego likes to sort of act or, or show up. It might be um, starting to feel you know, like a resentment and that might want you, that might make you want to sort of have the power or the control. Mm. And it can be very subtle, like the ego is a bit of a snake like that. Yeah, it almost has the same subtle effect as when you started sharing about the ego, I could feel it was more validation than acknowledgement again. Yeah, <laughs> well, we, we're seeking it Yeah. rather than like, because when you have people that come up and give in that way, they're offering it. Mm. And that's it's totally selfless. Mm. So if you can receive that, you're receiving from that place of um, purity. Mm. But when you're not receiving in those moments, then you still need it because Mm. it's just like the in and out breath. You need to breathe out at some point. So it's going to show up. Um, And the beautiful thing about exchange is, you know, I I get to sit here and have this beautiful conversation with you. I get to gift you my book as a a thank you and and an honoring and that there's an exchange that's taken place Mm. and we both leave and we can feel expanded, Mm. you know, and full and that's... Enriched. Enriched, (laughs) yeah, and that's how we should be living our lives. That's how nature lives its life. Mm. Mm. It's really interesting that you touch on nature because I um, there was a thread that you were sharing before about um, perspectives and this is a message that is really dear to my heart is that, you know, a lot of societal norms is trying to groove people into one consistent stream, mm. you know, and I think you shared this and I think it's a piece to acknowledgement as well is we're all the universe looking in on itself, mm. you know, and so fundamentally me trying to be you is mm. not going to serve me very exactly. well, you know, and that's where I believe dis-ease starts creeping in because yep. you're not in your flow. Totally. Um, you're trying Add to be balance. someone that you're not. Um, but all of us are consistently, like, you know, trying to course correct into something that, mm. you know, society is trying to funnel us into. And I think there's a really deep, like, there was a real deep process in there in terms of, like, just being who you are mm. is so fundamental to your health. Yeah. You know? And yet can feel so unhelpful when you're stuck and people just say, just be yourself. <laughs> it's, yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> how do, right? I do so that? How do you start? How do you start navigating through that? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, you know, for me, it's been meditation. Mm-hmm. Um, the podcasting has been a whole nother bag of tricks. Um, it's yeah. been amazing because I like consistently having people like yourself on, like I find myself again and again through conscious conversation. And mm. the minute I get meta and look back at the inspired evolution and go, oh, yeah. these are the things that obviously spirituality means a lot to me. Mm. Humility means a lot to me. Service means a lot to me. Inspiring, yeah. inspiration means and a lot to the me. The interviews evolution. become your mirror of your totally, values. Totally, bro. Yeah, totally, amazing. you know, and that's, and that's been the biggest, yeah. But meditation does exactly that, but even in a more graceful way, you yeah. know. It's, and uh, so at the moment, um. I travel around like Australia and I guide meditations on construction sites. Cool. Which is <laughs> how is that received? <laughs> it's amazing, right? So it's a really interesting, um, it's a really interesting groove because construction sites, um, quite an angular sort of space, very right angles, mm. very, and then as soon as you bring something, circle. Yeah, like meditation is <laughs> literally like a sphere That's coming so into cool. that space, you know, and it's just like, and so when you're the meditation guy, um, <laughs> people have anger issues or like, like oh, I haven't been able to resolve this thing with anger or. I can't forgive somebody because they owe me money or this yeah. that, and the other. So the meditation also extended into like becoming the life coach for a lot of people as yeah. well, um, which even coach is an interesting word. I just <laughs> see myself as like like being on the journey with them, you know yeah. what I mean? And just like I'm just in like totally. I'm here and you're here and let's just work through this together. Um, but it's it's in a very interesting space and it's, it's really cool. I feel – uh, the acknowledgement strong there because mm. it's really amazing because there's no one else that's really doing this yeah. um, for construction workers. And everyone's like, when you think of Aussie construction worker, you're like, their heart is nails, you yeah, know? Yeah, and it's yeah. like, literally, really? That's the same. <laughs> yeah, literally, right? And so, but yeah. the, the truth is that mm. they're, they're human beings, you know? I'm sure mm. you've interfaced with plenty, you know? Um, they're, they're just human beings as well, you know? Mm. And like, as soon as you get through that bravo, macho, like, exterior that mm. as soon as that peels away there's so many emotions that if in fact they're just like 
Often waiting, more. Yeah. yeah, because I've been so suppressed. And so it's really an awesome experience. It's yeah. like you go out and wow. you just have the most deep, profound, and uh, yeah, and the, and how much people learn to love their meditations is just it's incredible. Yeah, um, just, again, that feedback loop for the ontology. Of, yeah. yeah, it's incredible. Relief so away from the world. I share that in the inspiration to sort of you know, there's a bit of a process there, but I'm really excited to just tune into like the acknowledgement circles. And, uh-huh. Yeah, like what's that process? Yeah, like? cool. Well, it's probably the simplest, um, the simplest but most profound, um, yeah, avenue to create transformation. And there's mm-hmm. everything that we've been talking about with the premise that when you're in the acknowledgement circle you have to receive. Mm. So that impulse to say thank you or to hug the person or give back, you know, yeah. is um, that's, you're not allowed to. So the, the same <laughs> you know, Damn it. Yeah. But it's it, one thing to be acknowledged by one person, right? Yeah. Imagine when you're seen in the middle of a circle, you know, with, with a tribe that are all one after the other acknowledging what they see in you and your job is to just breathe that in. And in and in and it's it's the best thing to watch you know it's like the greatest high I joke um all the time when I'm presenting that my favorite thing to do when I'm drinking red wine with my friends is to make us all do acknowledgement circles because yeah. it's like it's an addictive thing you know? <laughs> because it's it's hard like you said to receive sometimes so when mm-hmm. you can create the space and actually ritualize it it's like it's a permission yeah you know? and that, that's a beautiful thing in itself um, but it's not anything new. Like this, like I said, has happened throughout the history of our evolution as a, as a species. We've known the importance of that. Mm. So acknowledgement practices um, are, in my experience, one of the most powerful ways that you can consolidate any sort of transformation because what mm. tends to happen is individuals can go through transforma- transformative experiences. And I look at mind value as an example, and I'm sure this is an experience a lot of these guys will feel they're going to go back home. They've had this in- amazing elated experience and then they, they have to reintegrate back into their life. You know, some people might be blessed like, like we are and then we're surrounded by a lot of these sorts of people mm-hmm. and we get to have a lot of these types of conversations. But for someone that doesn't have that, there's an absence of acknowledgement, right? Mm. So they go back and what it actually creates is a feeling of polarization. Mm. So the old, you know, and then and now the new, but when the new can't be acknowledged, it, it's, it's very difficult. It takes a very strong person to understand that and to integrate the new into their identity and the way that they relate to the world permanently when it's not actually being acknowledged by the people around you. So what happens is there's this big risk that you'll go back to previous behaviors and that yeah. the transformation unravels. And I talk about this. It's a real passion for me because I see this in a lot of personal development work. Mm. And this is why I, you see people, they're hungry. They're so hungry that they'll go to seminar, to seminar, to seminar, and yet yep. no change is made in their life. You know, why is that? It's not because the information is bs it's to me i see it it's because they're not actually getting the acknowledgement required by their circle in their day-to-day life for that information to be integrated for them to feel secure in their identity yeah so what i'm receiving from that which is like uh yeah the integration piece is Mm. massive Mm. um and the core of that integration piece is acknowledgement Mm. and acknowledgement Firstly, from yourself, mm. that you've gone through what you've gone through, and yeah. but then obviously you're in, you're implying how important it is to receive that yeah, consistent yeah. acknowledgement as well. And from there, I think maybe we can dive into connection. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <okay>. Let's do it. <laughs> um, just because it is like my number one value. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so just to just to lay it all out on the table. Um, like I see love as like the fundamental operating system. And I remember when that dropped in, it was like such a massive healing of its own. Right? Mm. It was like, let's just oh, love great. is like, love. yeah, the back <laughs> tapestry. So relieving, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> it was like, just like the tapestry is just going to be red and love. <laughs> and then what do we do from there? And it's like, okay, cool. So the spirituality is all about unity, right? So how can yeah. I serve unity? And then so it went like love and then unity. And then how do I service that? And it's like connection. Yeah. And I was like, boom, connection, unity, love, got it. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Amazing. I call yeah. myself the unifier. So, I feel like that's great. Yeah. so that's, yeah. And that's become the whole, like the, the whole model for me, you know? And, mm. um, and so consistently like love is obviously 
everything um but then operating in the day-to-day i feel like does it does it does it activate more connection does it activate more connection am Mm. i sparking more unity you know um and it just and again i'm just following my bliss through that as well you know love always generally doesn't always feel good because i know love can like you know it can be sorrowsome but it gives you the richest love puts a light on everything that isn't love (laughs) you know so it's not that love is painful but it's the realization of what isn't love that can sometimes be Oh, you know, and it gives you that rich tapestry. And so, and connection again and again just always feels fueled by bliss you know it's mm. like sitting here having this conversation with you like yeah. tot- like just such a gift how good you know? is it <laughs> it's such a blessing you know yeah. and so that connection again and again means everything but we touched on it in the beginning you know it's like for me it was that disconnect from culture mm. um disconnect from everybody else feeling the same way yeah like how important is the connection piece well i mean the first premise is that we're all like immensely connected mm. we're not always conscious of the fact that we're connected but like we touched on we live in an interdependent universe. Yeah. You know, my awakening relies on on your awakening. So to start to have your life enriched through the conscious experience of connection mm. is to essentially realize love. Yeah. You know? But I think this feeling of loneliness comes from um, the 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 conscious you lose conscious foresight of the fact that that's that's the truth. Cuz I think that's the third largest killer at the moment is loneliness. Well, depress- um, sorry, not depression, suicide is the leading cause of death in Australia in under 45s. You know, how's that for a, a statistic? More mm. than car accidents, drug overdoses, cancers. Like, we were losing 8.5 Australians statistically every day to suicide. We're losing fo- someone to suicide every 40 seconds in the world, in the Western world. That's that's so significant. And when you look at the contributing factors of that, um, to be in the – the frame of mind where the the best option for you or the choice um, is to end your own life. To me, that's anchored in so much um, loneliness. And may I, who am I to say that? That might not be the case for, for everyone. But I know for a fact from people in my own life that I've lost from suicide, it's this feeling of, of deep loneliness and disconnection and just feeling like there's no there's no light at the end of the tunnel. And when you feel like that, why would you go every day? you know, in, in that pain when, when you have a means to, to stop it. Yeah, there's this interesting thing that I've been realising as well is that, like, people that have loved ones mm. to care for them generally get better. Yeah. And the same people that have the same illness at the same age, pretty much the same stats but have no one to come home to. Yeah. They just let go and it's surrender It's massive as well. in the construction industry, right? Like, I remember every working two days, on the commission. Every yep. two days we lose one person to suicide. and if they made, were made redundant or they lose their partner, mm. the risk for specifically, I remember reading a report on this, men that work in construction – like um tradies specifically their risk of suicide is like exponential there's a lot of pressure yeah there's a lot of pressure and it's the cultures of masculinity too right and australia is, is yeah in... particularly bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's particularly intense yeah, yeah for sure for sure yeah so where does love out loud come from? <laughs> like I know we've we've had this this whole journey, this whole riff. <laughs> so what was like what was the is the whole journey, the process of writing the book? I know we've we've dove in, dove into that. Yep. Um is there any parts that we're missing in the in the Love Out Loud and tell us a little bit about the ethos of Love Out Loud. Yeah, sure. Well I started um conceptualizing the book. It was actually an awesome synchronistic moment in – I was actually at AFA, so Mind Valley has, tends to be this, like, catalyst of – I feel like it's got this reality distortion field. Have you heard of this? Yeah, totally. Steve, the I call Steve it Jobs. liminality. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> what do you call you, it? Liminality. Liminality. And it's very important in creating transformation. Yeah. You need to actually be taken away from your, you know, means of um, connecting to, to mainstream reality mm. in order for transformation to yeah. occur. So it was my first AFES yeah. and I was jet lagged and I was sitting on the beach in Ibiza. It was like amazing beach. Yeah, and Ibiza and sunsets and yeah, Ibiza's sunrises, amazing. Sunrises, yeah, right? Incredible. Over the water and I was just having this amazing like gratitude moment of like tears and I was mm. probably really tired as well. So that like contributed to, how, to the like, emotional yeah, vulnerability, the liminality that I <laughs> yeah. was experiencing. Oh, I forgot and- to mention in the introduction. Um, 
She's an emotional astronaut. We forgot <laughs> yeah. to say that. <laughs> oh, that was, you know, um, it's no um, word for me. <laughs> I really resonated with that. I might get it printed on my business card. <laughs> my apologies to interrupt, no, but uh, it was important, I feel, yeah. to get that out there. <laughs> yeah, it wants to be an astronaut, right? So it's like, made it. Emotional astronaut. Yeah. Well, you were having this moment. Yeah, it's an amazing moment. And I was asking the universe, like, what's next? And mm-hmm. I had my phone on um roaming and i was listening to i think it was like binaural bit frequencies or, yeah like not thinking that anyone was going to call me because it was quite late back in australia mm. and they get this phone call unknown number and they i pick up the phone and it's a book coach right who's been following me on um social media sort of knew of my journey and just said you know i don't mean to be too forward but i really think you should write a book i've been following your journey for a while and it was literally in this moment of like, what do I do next? You know, like what, and it, like the sign could not have been clear. And this is what I mean. Like this and is the stuff grounded. where I just thought I'm going crazy. Like yeah. didn't realize there were actually all, you know, conscious or unconscious creators of our reality at yeah. the beginning. But the more I started to understand it, um, the more real it became and the louder mm. the signs became. But what was crazy about making the decision, I'm very big in my messaging about making making a choice yeah because when you make a choice then the floodgates can open that's it it's a linchpin isn't it yeah you got to decide there's a quote um i can never remember who it's by but an amazing leader and he says there's nothing more powerful than a changed mind Mm. and that's so powerful for me because when you make a decision it's it's done it's already if you fully decide if you fully commit it's already done and i notice it with art more than anything well, life is art, but when mm. I'm focusing specifically on a creative endeavor, when I decide to fully commit, it starts to write me. Something so, happens. It, well, the whole space changes, yeah. right? The whole space internally shifts yeah. and then outside everything starts to shift. Massively. And it was like I came up with the, the model, the framework, very quickly and intuitively. Like within days I had the, the map. It follows um, the rite of passage framework in three parts, but the way I've done the chapter split was – just from deeply um, feeling into the process that I take people on and what Mm. the key elements of that were. Mm. And as I started to write the book, through each chapter, I was literally getting tested on my integrity of that message. Like like clockwork. Like Yes, I love that. And I could not, I had the, like the only time I would ever get blocked was when I wasn't, like taking accountability for the things I was writing about uh-huh. and I couldn't write about it. Of course. So this the book I have so much gratitude for this the process of writing this book. Yeah. Because of the the transformation that we, that, that created it, that created in me, yeah. And yeah. um to have my philosophies be so congruent. It was like once I finished the writing process, it was just this like the foundations were so strong. It felt like, you know, the the mm. pyramid within me was just like unbreakable there was mm. no um incongruity within the structure built a crystal inside yeah, yeah like, a, like a self-acknowledgement exactly title. and yeah. then to be able to give that to other people it sort of made me really i've always appreciated art and a lot of my facilitation ideas also came from my background in theater which mm. was you know the study of human condition and, and ego and, and identity and all of those things um so art's always played a really massive role in my life and when you mm. take on a character it starts again, it starts to speak to you, mm. you know, and I've always known this about art, but this book, because it was a process from, you know, the writing took about six to seven months, but the whole process was about a year and a few months. So it's quite a long amount of time relatively when you're, you know, a consultant or a facilitator and a project might be two weeks or a month or max three months mm. to be focused in a single direction yeah so i got to notice it on a on a greater scale a greater level yeah Yeah. and it really helped me understand why amazing minds and amazing leaders say know your life's legacy that became real for me in a very different way because Mm. i noticed well if i give 18 months of devotion and dedication and commitment to this one project and it speaks to me like this this Mm. clearly this loudly what would start to happen if i start to declare this is my life's work. Yeah. I'm devoted and committed to building this for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I can, well, I'm starting to see and can only imagine how magnified that really gets, how 
loudly you start to become supported by the universe. Yeah, of course. Mm. Of course. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. that. Um, is there a message in your heart? Like, I know this is so <laughs> lots, much. Lots. I know. Is there a message in your heart that you're, you're burning to share or maybe like the dearest message or something you want to share? Great question. Um, and I've had I've had lots of reflections um, the last couple of weeks mm. and I've really been thinking about what's the key thing. I'm running a, um, a talk seminar session for Mind Valley next Monday. Awesome. So can't I've been wait. asking myself Yo, this. Yo, yeah, cannot wait. This question. I haven't announced that yet. So. <laughs> Shh, yeah, behind the scenes. Bit of a dream Don't country, tell anybody. Bit of a dream <laughs> Oh, tell everybody. Tell everybody. <laughs> All of the tribe there. It's such a blessing. Yeah, I was on sta- uh, the Mind Valley stages. The, the audience. Are- yeah, the audience. They're so supportive. It's Man, like a dream. It audience. is such a yeah, so you're much love participation. It. You're absolutely gonna love it. It was such a gift. Yeah, yep. I can't wait. To, yeah. Thank you. I'm really excited for it. It's on Monday. Um, so yeah, I've been thinking about this. What's most present? What's most present for me? And there's been a few themes. The thing I was writing about this morning was about. Um, aloneness you know de- deciphering the differences between loneliness and, and aloneness and it's it is something that's very strong as a message in my heart because so many people you know the thing that's that's stopping them from living the life that they want to live and evolving themselves to become the person that they want to be or being honest with themselves all, all of the themes not receiving the acknowledgement that we've talked about I, I feel one of the biggest keys for people in starting to really understand this in your way right not mm. his way this perspective not my of looking way, at the universe your this perspective way. Looking, your yeah. perspective looking your at the perspective universe. and you're going to have a different language and a different visual and a different set of feelings that contribute to that wisdom because it is in you you do have that wisdom mm. we all do i feel it can only be found in your aloneness mm. one of the um most significant moments for me in understanding that was three months or so into the tour when mm. i left to to do the initial tour across australia and it's actually my opening story, so you'll read it as well, um, was travelling through the Western Australian desert or from the NT across to, to, to WA. Oh, the beautiful like part of the country, yeah, the Kimberleys, yeah, yeah, yeah. yo! <laughs> and, oh, it's breathtaking for any of you guys that have never done that drive or non-Australians. It's, you know, the most um, vast desert you have ever seen. Like, yeah. Australia, people don't realise, is 90% desert. <laughs> It's like a red dirt for it's red, hundreds and country. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kilometers, and you just feel like a speck. Yeah. And I was this teenager, you know, just giving up my everything. I just, I was so far away from any sense of familiarity. Yeah. Throwing myself into this like radical vision and dream that I had absolutely no idea whether these principles were true and my spirit, my, my newfound sense of spirituality had any substance or if I was totally batshit crazy. Mm. You know, and this one night, um, we weren't going to make it to the next stop by sunset and you shouldn't drive in the desert in Australia because at sunrise and sunset because of the kangaroos, like it's hectic. You can have mm. like 10 kangaroos jumping in front of your car every 100 metres. Yo. Um, so what we decided to do because we weren't going to make it was actually stop and park during um, sunset and we sat on the top of the van. It was me and one other teammate and we were watching this like Lion King style sunset Yo. and it was just silence. Like I mean couldn't hear a car, couldn't hear a cricket, just – I, literally deadly silent. I didn't understand the meaning of that term, deadly silent, until this moment. And as I was in that um, that space, I just, without even realising, I just went into this deep trance as the sun was getting lower and lower. And then I probably would have been in the trance for maybe 20 or so minutes and then I looked down and I just noticed my whole body, like every hair on my body was just standing upright and like, the tears were just like pouring from my face. I'd never meditated in my life before, really. Yeah. Like I didn't understand that that was a state of meditation, of like mm. experiencing universal love. And it was this feeling of being so far away from every, so alone, but so connected. Mm. You no. Know? And I grew up, you know, through my illness being so lonely and being scared of that loneliness. And that is what drove, you know, that sort of, the, the addiction I went through with my eating disorder, 
was that um, I didn't want to be present with myself. I was constantly preoccupied with this addiction and these addictive behaviours and these tendencies and the addiction to the emotion I was experiencing. I couldn't just be present mm. you know, and, and still and okay in me, you know, mm. alone. And it's a it's a very important that people for, to me for for people to understand that you can and will find solace and peace in your aloneness. Like that is possible. In fact, that's actually required if you want to mm. live if you want to live this life and, and walk this path. It's it's essential, and the only way there is to practice it just like anything to sit Mm -hmm. with yourself and sit with your shit and the first time you ever sit in stillness it's going to feel like the worst thing ever and this is why people will say to me nicole i fucking hate meditation the (laughs) reason you hate meditation is because every time you try to meditate the first thing that comes up is your guilt your shame your insecurities but that's coming up so that you can be aware of it and via that awareness you can actually work through it you can place it you can accept it you can make peace with it and the more that you do that every time you go to be with yourself in stillness it's like an uncovering and Mm -hmm. and this like infinite literally this infinite landscape i used to work with a um a monk that explained it as you you finally reach this place in in your meditation of ripping through the golden fabrics of reality and i just remember being in such wonder and awe when he when he said it like that because I was like, that's exactly what it's like, you know. This everything becomes possible. What Nassim was sharing mm, about in his physics yesterday, so like, you are the universe at the yeah. center on on your molecular level. Mm. You are the infinity of the universe, but no one can get there for you. You know, mm. when I meet someone, I I see your divinity. I see it in you, mm. but I can't do the work. To get there. For you, yeah. you know? and it, yeah. It's got to come from you and you can have that be supported by a tribe, but ultimately you have to mm. be that warrior. And I think for me there's like, because uh, I deliver talks on corporate mindfulness and meditation, guide mm. meditations, and the biggest piece as well for me is like there's at least seven, there's at least 7.6 billion of us here, right? Mm. And then there's at least 7.6 different billion ways to meditate. (laughs) You know, it's like, because we're, like I said, we're all the universe looking in Mm. on ourselves. So there's like that connection to self is completely unique. Exactly. Know the definition of a meditation, because when you look up meditation, it's not sit with your legs crossed for Mm. X amount of time every day. Mm. It's a state. It's a state. and, And you will know what your state is. I was in a deep meditation when I was writing this morning, so mm. I didn't even notice that I missed Skip's workshop because <laughs> I was just in such a deep meditation and it was mm. just coming through me. Yeah. And everyone has an, an equivalent of that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so oh, much for you, sharing, <laughs> man. Oh, it has been such... Okay, so <laughs> thank you for, for today, obviously, this connection and Pleasure. connecting with you. Thank you for the book and yeah. just the yumminess of the conversation. Mm. I feel like I've just dropped into a lifelong friend already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, thank you for, you know, for, for your journey and for your story, for everything that, you know, the past may be an illusion, but everything you've gone through to get through to here. Yeah. Thank you so much for all the work you've thank put you. into that and the heart that's shown up through that. And, mm. um yeah, and so thank you for today and, and blessings on on the journey coming forward, sister. Likewise, like, brother. Show yeah. these guys your logo so they can inspired <laughs> the inspired evolution. Inspired evolution. I'm going to tag, the um, brain I'm gonna with tag all you the in my post. You just yeah. weren't coming up when I jumped on my <laughs> Down, he's, How many downloads do you get? Like 10,000? Oh, it's it's thriving. Yeah. Yeah, just keep me humble. Touch so, wood. <laughs> no, I'm going to build you up. I'm going to build you yeah, up. Yeah, Acknowledgement. <laughs> I'm on the journey. I'm on the inspired evolution. Exactly. <laughs> Download it and check it out. There's 50 episodes up. Yeah, there's about 50 episodes up at the moment. And, and um, more to come. Yeah, just more amazing conversations like this. Yeah. It's really just, yeah, spark, spark the journey. Mm. My very last question, by no means my least mm. question, my favorite question, um, beyond the story, beyond the skin suit, beyond the fabric of the golden weaves, mm. <laughs> the golden curtain, um, who was Nicole Gibson? Oh. Unconditional love. Yeah. <laughs>
You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe here. Yeah. Or maybe here. <laughs> or maybe in here for you. <laughs> amazing. Mm. Amazing. Thank you so Thank you. much, sister. The easiest way to get in touch with Nicole is? Oh, well, lots of ways. You can find me on um, on my socials, which is just my name. You should find me or Nick Gibson on Insta. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if you want to, to read the book or engage with the content, you can just jump on my website, which is nicolegibson.com.au. Dot au, don't forget the dot au. Aussie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Love of the Inspired Evolution and sharing the Love of the Inspired Evolution. If you feel like this content may support, has supported you or may support anyone else that you know may resonate with the content of it, please share away and share the love around. Thank you guys so much. And to stay up to date on whatever's coming out with the Inspired Evolution, please subscribe. There's all these links in the bio for you to tune into the episodes and all these different platforms just so the message can get to you and your loved ones. Thank you so much for all your love and support. Stay inspired to evolve.